Hi Aquarius, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your November 2021 mid-month tarot reading. This is a reading for all Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. I thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for everything you've done for the channel. I absolutely love reading on this platform and we will continue. And if you're new here, welcome to you. I post new readings every Friday then again on Monday. So if a reading doesn't resonate, come back in a couple of days. You can watch a new reading. You could check other parts of your chart. Now, Fridays are always a general reading. Mondays are different every week. This week will be a more detailed Celtic cross style reading. I'll do um, some weeks a love reading. I'll do other oracle card readings and pick a card readings. And I'd also tell you, ta uh, tarot is sacred divination. The readings are timeless. Now, there are times we get intuitive hits on timelines, like weeks or months, but I wouldn't say it's a specific date necessarily. So if a reading catches your eye, I'd say watch it. And if you like tarot and you like the channel, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to Higher Source Tarot. All right, what advice do you have for Aquarius? Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. What does Aquarius need to know, please? For the best and highest good of all concerned with Aquarius. All right, we will begin here with the tarot and then we'll have an angel answers oracle card reading. Current situation, you've got the three of cups. Oh boy, oh boy. With the three of swords as the immediate influence, you're represented by the queen of wands. The distant past, you've got the Four of Pentacles, more recent past, the Ten of Swords. I like this, getting a lot better. Uh, the energy coming uh, towards you is the star. We like to see that. And you are represented by the Queen of Swords. The person or situation you're attracting is the ten, Nine of Swords. Excuse me. You have the Hierophant and your hopes and fears, Six of Swords and the outcome. Now the bottom of the deck, this is interesting, your three clarifiers. We've got the Eight of Swords, the Page of Wands, and the Emperor here. So we've got, let's see, three major arcana. And um, yeah, you've got your your energy. You've got Aries, Taurus, and uh, Aquarius, of course. And so in terms of the uh, other elements, we've got all the elements here. Well, I feel like they're telling you, if you're in some kind of a situation where you've been overthinking something, because I do feel like there's an ending here, but you're moving forward, and it's really about new beginnings and in a really empowered place, if you had somebody who really broke your heart, I feel like you're going to move on from them. Even with that Eight of Swords, um, you know, I mean, it's it's possible reconciliation is here with the Three of Cups. But with the Three of Swords, Three of Cups, that's a little dicey, but we'll talk. But anyway, with the Eight of Swords, it's that committee of the mind, right? The, the committee meeting that never resolves anything. There's never any resolution. It's just around and around and around. And so we often, too, talk about the swords representing too many people in the mix. So you've got the peanut gallery right here, back here. You've got these two swords, which could be your inner circle. And then the, the one in the front is your higher self, okay? So it really is about walking free of all that. Other There may be too much noise around you, too many people talking. Now with the um, page of wands here, the Page of Wands gets you out there. It's an uplifting energy. It's an energy, too, of spunk and spirit wanting to get out and try new things. And I feel like they're telling you that. Get out of the old patterns. Get out of any ruts. If you feel like you're in a rut, you've got a renewal here. You've got something beautiful happening. So I'd say take the renewal and run. Um, you do have, too, though, with the Emperor, it's an, an energy, too, of integrity, of trust, of wealth of knowledge, of protection. So it's a nice card to have here with some of the other cards that are here because I feel like they're trying to tell you you have good people out there. There's good people that are going to be around you and available to you, but you have to let yourself move forward. And so with the emperor too, I mean, he is connected to source energy and you have that a few different times here. Um, with the uh, three of swords, three of cups, oh dear. I definitely say if there was a third party situation, it's time to move on. Now, others of you, that Three of Swords could represent things other than a person, okay? It does not have to be just that. So I don't want to make this, take the reading in only one direction. Um, the Three of Cups is, of course, it's celebration, it's reunion. It is not a negative card. 
it does not have to always mean that it's a third person getting involved um, because they're dancing. They appreciate what they have. But with that three of swords, I do want to, I do want to make sure we mention that at least. Some of you though, if it was a, if it is a, a reconciliation or somebody that wants to come back around, I don't know. I think you're still going to cut them out being the queen of swords. I just don't, I think it's going to be painful for them. If it was somebody that cheated on you that wants to come back, this is where cross watchers hate me. I, I don't think you're going to take them. I just don't see that happening. I think you've got something new here and it feels alive. It feels invigorated. So why would you settle for that crap? But with this, it is a, there's an energy of disappointment and then one of renewal either way. So there may be something, like I said, something new that comes in and it has you moving forward. You do have cards too of travel. That's also indicated just as an aside. So the Queen of Wands is in your destiny. It's a very empowered energy. You've got, you know, with the Queen of Wands, Queen of Swords, that both of those are empowered energies. The Queen of Wands is wands are upwardly mobile. It's making gains, it's taking action. But this is also a card where you do have loyal people around you. And so I wouldn't let one situation influence the subconscious too much or become embedded so that you build a lot of mistrust. Because overall, this is an energy of loyalty, of trust, of taking um, taking some risks, but knowing, having a knowing that things are going to work out. So with the Queen of Wands, she's very passionate. She's inspired and passionate about whatever she does. And she's also, too, very passionate in relationships. So you may find, too, that in your lifetime, if you are in a relationship where you know the chemistry is not right, you know it's not going to last. This is an energy of almost requiring that. But it's also an energy of... um manifesting it. So I do feel like you may find that the chemistry is typically, you find people that you have a lot of chemistry with fairly easily. So, um, and it can be work related too, like having good vibes at work, good synergy at work. So with this, you've got the four of pentacles in the distant past. Somebody got very closed off here. This is a, it's the miser of the tarot. It's not wanting to share feelings. And I'm seeing somebody with like duct tape over their mouth. Whoever you were involved with was a really poor communicator. And that was half the damn problem. I do feel like too, they were emotionally not very well regulated. They weren't very stable emotionally. And so whether they realize it or not, that was half the problem too. So it's the poor communication coupled with this feeling of just emotions all over, like swinging like a pendulum. And I feel like they don't like themselves. That's half, That's a lot of it too, that they're not comfortable with who they are. They don't know who they are. And so because of that, they can't be much of a partner. So they may have broken things off with you. It may have been going bad for a while and maybe you just kept sticking it out. It's like being in the line at the grocery store with the slowest checkout on earth and you invest so much time, you wait until you're all through the line because you don't want to give up. You know, it may have been one of those where you kept staying and staying going, this sucks, but I feel like I need to because I put so much into it. And with the Ten of Swords, this is never an easy pill to swallow. It's the bitter end. And it can be a very dramatic ending. you got the Nine and the Ten. They're represented by the, the Nine. So it could have been them where they're incredibly a dramatic victim energy all the way. They blame, blame, blame. I mean, this person can't even take responsibility for their own driving. It's all the assholes on the road every time they have a bad experience in traffic. Um, but with this, so I do feel like the ending for you too, though, it did cause pain. I don't want to make too light of this. It is something that's painful. And I feel like it's like almost a flashback where you look back and put all these things together, connect the dots, and you go, oh God, I should have seen this coming. But, you know, with the tens, it will be the completion, it's realization, okay? And and ultimately out of this, you rise again in full power. And oh, speaking of rising again, here you are. I mean, we love to see this. You've got the energy, your own energy of the star with also, you know, the queen of swords that brings in more power in your own, again, in your own element here. And with the, the hierophant, which is a marriage card and a life partner, it's wonderful energy. So with the star, I do feel like you're pulling in something that is really your true heart's desire. So the universe hears you and you may have been manifesting this and that led to some endings that felt painful. They felt abrupt. But with this, 
it's truly what you want and they're telling you it's available to you. She leans on the seat of the soul for balance, okay? She pours one of the pitchers on the earth and so she's not as concerned about the material plane. It really is more being focused on that source energy. That's the focus, meditate, take care of yourself. This is a card of revelation. So some of you may be on a bit of a spiritual quest here, but you're getting the deeper meaning. You're really understanding who you really are and the power that you have. Um, with the star too, there's an inner knowing, a peace, a calm, a tranquility that comes over you. It is complete acceptance. In this energy, you're very unconditional. And so you'll attract people who are also in the know about who they are. They know who they are and that's what your match is. It's not this other insecure energy. So in terms of a job too though, if it's a job or work, there may be some kind of travel involved, but I do feel like if you had something that seemed like it was out of reach, it becomes feasible. It's it's a reality and it's right here. It's right here right now. And so with the Queen of Swords, again, you've got this very powerful energy and the Queen of Swords also cuts things out. Very no-nonsense energy. Great communicator. So somebody who's not a good communicator, you're probably going to be doing all the talking. And I don't feel like, too, you're not going to get pulled into arguments with this. I just don't see you doing that. You've got very concise, um, you know, con a way to calibrate your words in a concise way with this. But it's clarity of thought, too. Now, she also uses her wit. So you may find, too, if it's as far as work-related stuff, you may get right to the point, have very clear communication in writing and in word, but it's also using that those funny elements where people find you to be humorous. They kind of look forward to contacts from you because they know it'll be funny. And it also is you being in this place of doing things right. You do things right the first time with this energy. Um, now, it's bold energy, yes, but it's also, um, the swords are also nobility. And so even though we talk about the thinking aspects, which you have some that are more related to that, this is also making gains, okay? She's very prestigious. She can be the card of the attorney too. Um, she also can be the card of the widow. And I bring that up because you do have some sadness in the reading. But with the Queen of Swords, she uses the, the wounds as wisdom. So you learn from those experiences. You don't stay in the place of suffering with this. She's the kind of energy that will move you forward and will kind of leave that where it needs to be left, all right? It's not taking old experiences with you. And so the Nine of Swords represents the person or situation that you've been dealing with. I do feel like they have a lot of guilt they have a lot of anxiety, a very restless kind of energy. And especially, too, there's something, like I said before, about them being very emotionally dysregulated or unstable. And so they may be trying to scramble to change things, but I just don't see that happening. And so with this nine, nines are all about the completion, okay? It's this realization, and that will help you to be off into a new beginning because you do have energy of moving forward. And it may feel like at first the moving forward seems to be a bit slow, but I do see it taking off as things go. Now, we like the Hierophant here because the Hierophant also, too, the Emperor has protective energy. We mentioned that, but so does the Hierophant. The Hierophant is inside of a, a temple, okay? The pillars represent wisdom, knowledge, inner peace. The Hierophant is your highest, best self, that inner guru, your inner guide, who tells you, holds up his hand and says, be still and know. It's also an energy, too, though, of inner relationship. I do feel like you have somebody who comes in who's very devoted, very honest, integrous energy, wants to be a partner, wants to be a life partner. And I do feel like, too, with this, it's an energy where you have learn the lesson that you needed to learn. And even if it was painful and you go, I don't want another one of those lessons. I didn't order this. There must have been a mistake. You've learned. And so you don't have to remaster that lesson. It's an energy of mastery. And so, um, you know, overall, it's using your intuition. There's inspiration here. And it's also about calling some of those what we would call secret forces it's being empowered by the universe. So with the Six of Swords, you bring in a beautiful, balanced, harmonious energy. The wavy water on the right here indicates where you're coming from, this unstable energy into this clear, placid water. It's smooth sailing. It's moving forward. It's bringing in the balance, of course, of the Six. 
and it's beauty and harmony. So it also too is reciprocity. So and if you had something that was very one-sided, this is where you bring in energy where there's a give and take in a relationship. A give and take too with work. You're not going to be expected to, you know, give up your entire life for some company that doesn't appreciate you. It really is recipro reciprocity happening. So let's see here what the angels have to say for you, Aquarius. And the timeline here. <clears throat> All right, you've got it. It's up to you. Of course it is. You can have, do, or be anything because you are the universe. You create your own reality. You've got remain positive. So I, I like that in this reading because you've definitely got some angsty kind of energies. Meditation brings answers. And we did say that, didn't we? You've got here, take action. So meditate and then take the inspired action. I knew this was going to come up. You've got reconsider. So there may be something, if you've got a very specific idea in mind, get more open. Let the universe bring in some co-creative influences because there may be something better, but we're just you're just too straightforward on one idea. But good things are here for you. Great changes lie ahead, Aquarius. I love you, and I'll be back again soon.